I'm Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopath in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. I also have a home office in Milwaukee I see patients in. But uh, today I'm here to talk to you about bone broth, something you've probably heard of before, I hope. Um, it's made a real comeback lately. And it's, it's more than just, just a thin broth that you get some bouillon cube. Bone broth is the real thing. It's when you take real bones and the ligaments and cartilage and all the things that are attached to them, the extra little bits of meat, possibly organ meats that you didn't use, um, basically you take that and you put it in a cooker and you get out just the most wonderful broth. It's thick, it's rich, it's almost jelly-like can be jelly-like. If you do it right, it's jelly-like. Um, and, and what's wonderful about that is you end up getting a soup base or a base for cooking a lot of things. You can use it in rice, you can use it in soups, you can use it in anything that calls for a nice savory liquid, sauces, gravies. And what it has in there is really, really easily absorbable forms of minerals and you're also getting um, collagen, uh, chondroitin, um, various other compounds that are just really great for, for helping your joints. It's great for any time you have any kind of a, a broken bone or a fracture or osteoporosis, any kind of situation where you're wanting to get your bones and joints strengthened. Bone broth is a good way to get some of these preformed amino acids and minerals and um, various other things in there so that your body can quickly heal itself. Um, if you want real bone broth, don't go to a grocery store, it's weak. Uh, you really need to make it yourself out of real bones. You want it to be almost jelly-like. You really want it to be jelly-like at the end. Um, that's when you know you really got the good stuff out of it. And you want to take not just the bones, but you want to take the little bits of tendon and sinew and the little chunks of strange looking meats and organ meats and you want to put that all in your pot and just boil it for a very long time. The easiest way to do it is in a pressure cooker. You can also use a crock pot, but that can take several days. But with a pressure cooker you can do it in a matter of hours. And you want to get down to where those bones are, are just soft where everything is dissolved out of those bones and leached into that wonderful brothy water. And you want to even crush those bones down some more and really get more of those minerals into it. And that's just a really great place to find all these valuable, simple amino acids, uh, minerals, calcium, um, magnesium, phosphorus, the natural collagen, which is a protein found in bones and skin and skin lig ligaments and tendons and bone marrow, all these things, um, they're just pre-packaged in this lovely broth ready for your body to incorporate into your own healing process and strengthening your tendons and your bones and um, your joints. Um, also, it's really great for fixing a leaky gut. If you're having a lot of food sensitivities and a lot of IBS, Sometimes that means that the tight junctions in your stomach are, are not tight anymore. And one way of tightening them up is having a nice simple diet with good bone broth and that will heal an inflamed gut in a lot of cases. It can be really great for many, many other things. Um, just age related degradation it can be, can be slowed down. <laughs> the dog agrees. So one of the most valuable components of a good bone broth is the, the gelatin, which is, it is the jelly part of the bone broth. And it really is that thing that helps bones glide together without friction. And it, it's also the building blocks um, that we need. It has the building blocks we need to form and maintain these strong bones. And so bone broth, it contains all sorts of great things like glycosaminoglycans, glucosamine, 
hyaluronic acid, chondritin sulfate, lots of minerals and electrolytes. And that's a really important thing. Like if you're sick, getting, and you're having a hard time holding anything down, just a nice bone broth with a lot of minerals and electrolytes can really, really calm an upset stomach and also provide the nutrition you need to heal. And it's great for your skin. It's great for your bones. It's great for your joints. It's great for your hair. It's great in a soup. It's great in rice. <laughs> it's great as a base for everything. So let's let's get in here and make some wonderful bone broth. And here we have it. This is what you need to make bone broth. This, for me, uh, this was a nice natural turkey that I roasted up and. When I took off all the meat, I stuck the bones in this bag, and actually I froze this for a little while till I got around to making this bone broth. You can see there's some organ meats in here, lots of cartilage and tendons, just all the different bones, even the neck there. We're just gonna take all this random chunks that you probably have been just wasting. We're gonna put that in my lovely electric pressure cooker here. Best investment ever, although I would say in the future, I get an Instapot. This is kind of Teflon. The Instapot has a really nice stainless steel one, which I think is way better. But for now, I've got the Cuisinart. And so that's what I'm gonna use to make my bone broth. We're gonna stick in all this stuff. It's full of water already. Um, what in the world was that crazy sound the dogs are making back there? Got a puppy, you never know what's gonna go on in the background. Here it is. This is essentially what it takes to make bone broth. So I've added these bones in there into my pot. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lock that lid down, put it on full pressure, plug in the unit. Always helps. <laughs> and then program it over here, get it up. To the maximum amount of time on this unit, I believe, is 99 minutes. So we'll see if we can get that up to 99 minutes without going too far. It'll speed up here pretty soon. And start. And that'll take its time. It'll get up to pressure. And then it'll cook for 99 minutes. At that point, I will do it again. Put it on for another 99 minutes. And that usually gets me right up to where I want. When I open this up next time, I expect these bones to be soft and this broth to be delightful. I'll meet you back here when we're all finished. Okay, we're back. We've added the random vegetable trimmings and crushed the bones a little bit more, give it another 10 minutes and the pressure, high pressure, and then let it cool down in its natural pressure release setting. So let's see what that looks like on the inside. We'll probably do a bit more bone crushing, but let's see what we got. Yeah, the leaks have really reduced. quite a bit. Let's just grab one of these guys. Yeah, that's a very soft bone. It could be a little softer, but pretty soft. That middle part's a little tough still, but it'll be close enough. Really, we're going for the big marrow bones. We want to get that all crushed into here. Just give me a little time to just mash this stuff up. 
that looks pretty good. Most of the bones are smashed up real well. You can still see some organ meats lumping around in there. Now if you're going to use a bigger bones, I mean with chicken and turkey, it's going to squish down pretty great with just the pressure cooking or several days in a low crock pot. Um, but if you're going to be using bigger beef bones, you might want to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar that can help release some of the bigger bones. But in this case, this is pretty much ready to strain out. Now you've crunched all that bone matter and mushed all that um, pulp into your soup. All the collagen is mixed up in there. All the really good stuff is now in solution. So then take out the ugly chunks and then you will have bone broth. So let's get the, the food mill and take out those yucky chunks. Okay. Let us remove <laughs> the goo. Just pour this crushed bone broth into the food mill. Separate out the bones and chunks from the broth that we're going to keep. Look at how few bones are left in there. Just a couple that I missed somehow. but like I said most of the bones have crushed up nicely so I'm gonna call it good and you just kind of get in here and work the handle around squeezing out all the amazing bone broth liquid and pulping what's left of these bones if you can you can see there's still a few little bits of organ meat in there as well, so kind of want to squish everything real nice. Squeeze the juice out of those hearts, kidneys, and livers that got added into the soup. We've got wonderful blood building properties. milky bone broth. If you think you get some chunks left in there, you might take it through another layer of a screen before you go. Or What I really like is this little funnel. When I pour it into the jar, this little funnel has a nice tight little basin that sieves out even more little chunks. See how the base in there. It's a pretty clever little thing. In any case, that's your bone broth. This is also a really good thing for any kind of liquid fasting. Um, something like bone broth and other vegetable broths, just in this pure form. Really be healing to the gut if you're giving it some rest. I hope you make your own.
And there you have it. A nice jar of bone broth to use in recipes, to use as a soup base, to use as, oh, as a liquid fast. Uh, so many ways to use bone broth. Now one thing is when this dries, I mean cools off, excuse me, when this cools off, never let it dry out, uh, when this cools off, it will form uh, much of quite a jelly and then the top part will even form kind of a a greasy fat layer. Now you can scoop off this fat layer like I do. I s store it away in the freezer and use it in tamales but uh, you can also just use that for frying things. Or if you like your soup to be really rich that's a great fat layer. But the jelly is a good thing. The jelly is it just means it's a very concentrated broth. So this would actually make probably four times this amount of, a, of soup. You just add four times more water than this to get a really delicious soup base. So bone broth, excellent for your health, for minerals, for electrolytes, for all these pre-made amino acids. Make it yourself at home. You can store some in your freezer for when you need it. You can eat it right away. It's very versatile. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.